Certainly, obviously, taking a good history from the patient, that's really important. Um, a nasal examination and a nasal endoscopy is, is very important. Um, at some point in time, doing imaging is going to be important in a patient with CRS. Typically, you want that to be done after the patient's been treated. Most, most recommendations are to do a CT scan after the patient has been treated with what you consider maximal medical therapy and try to look and see what's really chronic. Well, chronic rhinosinusitis is a disease which uh, really affects uh, the full uh, nose and uh, uh, you can uh, suffer from chronic rhinosinusitis uh, by having uh, polyposis, which are most uh, patients who come by. And in the first uh, examination would include an endoscopy or fibroscopy, depending on the uh, sensitivity of the nose of the patients. You may use a, a larger or a, a rigid endoscope or a flexible endoscope and um, try to assess the extension of the polyposis, uh, try to see where mucus is coming out and to assess then which uh, paranasal sinuses are truly involved. Uh, said this, of course, you would need to add an uh, olfaction test to uh, see whether the inflammation has already involved the uh, area of olfaction, which is uh, a severe side effect of chronic rhinosinusitis. Uh, in those patients uh, who have uh, been treated by uh, antibiotics on the long term and still have purulent discharge, you may go for a swab and uh, then for uh, uh, testing of which uh, bacteria are involved in order to address the uh, medical treatment a little bit better. And uh, that would be the basic um, assessment of uh, chronic rhinosinusitis with the medical history. And then further on, if the patient uh, underwent uh, thorough medical treatment, appropriate medical treatment, uh, then, of course, uh, you would add uh, imaging uh, in case you were planning for uh, surgery. Uh, but in any case, imaging would be the second step, uh, always in those cases in you, which you are planning uh, to perform an endoscopic sinus surgery.